guys and uh, welcome to episode number 10 of the Cam and Jeanette podcast. Uh, my name is Camilla and I am podcasting here from my house in Denmark where I live with my family. You can also find me as Cam and Jeanette on Ravelry, Instagram, uh, my homepage, yeah, almost anywhere. I If I have a profile, my name will be Cam and Jeanette there. Um, I will have links down in the uh, description box or note box or whatever <laughs> down here. So if you want to find me or follow me, you can check out the links. Uh, today is uh, September, the Friday, September the 11th of September. So uh, fall is finally here. It's sweater weather. Uh, we have had a really warm August. So uh, a September with a little colder weather is actually pretty nice. Yeah, we had uh, uh, my daughter's confirmation. I told you about that. It was a big party, and yeah, and yeah. I guess the last two weeks has been pretty calm. Not um, anything wild going on or any wild plans or anything like that. So, yeah, we've just been uh, working, relaxing. Uh, not much. Not much interesting has happened anyway. I have had uh, some knitting time, and that is good. I have. I really needed that. I really needed some time to focus on projects and knitting and designing and stuff like that. So that has been good. So I have some things to show you today. And I also have a new content. So I I have had requests about talking about yarn a little bit more and talking about the different kinds of yarns and um, what kinds of yarns I like to work with and why and what yarn is good for what kinds of projects and stuff like that. So. I have decided to do, in every episode, I will talk about a specific yarn. And I will start with fingering weight yarn. And today I will talk a little bit about fingering weight yarn. And uh, I will focus on like the single merino, uh, like one ply yarn. So I'll talk about that a little later. And also I have finished the Nina cardigan. The pattern is not out yet. I did, the pattern is, done but I still need pictures. Um, I need Esther to uh, model for me in the in the new Nina cardigan that I made uh, but she's been busy. She's 14 so she is all over the place. <laughs> yeah haven't had that. Uh, didn't get to do that yet so once I have the pictures uh, done I am I will be ready to uh, publish the pattern. So I'm hoping sometime next week but I will all let you know on if you follow me on Instagram, I will definitely uh, tell you there. Um, and then I have an unboxing because uh, we have the last sock yarn from Birken Bell. Uh, so this is the last yarn I have from any of my yarn clubs. And I don't have any uh, yarn to unbox in October or November. Uh, because uh, I buy these uh, yarn clubs with my own money, so I can't uh, spend all my money on these uh, yeah, yarn clubs, even though I, I would love to. But also because I have um, three, I have joined three yarn clubs for December, so my Vlogmas uh, has, um, yeah, that I have, so I have some good stuff to show you for uh, during uh, my Vlogmas in December. So I guess. That's what we're going to talk about today. So I guess I will start out with the Nina cardigan because that is finally done. And um, maybe I should have buttoned this up. But uh, it was hard actually for me to pick out the right buttons for this cardigan because the yarn is so speckled and it's speckled with like both um, greens and purples and the main color in this bagels is kind of, it's, maybe it's hard to show, I don't know, but you can tell that it has like a beige or khaki kind of base and then the bagels are like mm, lots of greens and purples. So I picked out green buttons to go with this and I even posted uh, on Instagram a voting um, and it's, I think like maybe 80 or 80% 80 or something voted for the purple buttons. 
but I just couldn't resist these green ones. They are very, they are not very green. I think on the picture on Instagram, they look very dark green and very sparkly and they are not. They are really, I really like these green soft buttons. So this is the done Nina cardigan. And um, yeah, why does it always do that? I didn't put in um, very many buttons because usually people don't close it anyway. So as long as you have like the option to button it up, I think that's good. And also I think that if you have too many buttons, it's kind of too heavy on the garment. And I didn't want it to pull like that in the front. So I actually didn't put in very many buttons in this sweater and I like it like that. And I have this long rip at the bottom that I really like. Um, yeah, so we just need some pictures. Uh, this is knit in, uh, so I talk, I've talked a lot about the yarn choice for this cardigan and also talk about uh, alternatives for using uh, more expensive hand dyed yarn. This is Madeline Tush DK in the colorway Mass Rover um, that I really, really like. I really like this uh, colorway. It turned out really good. And I need one for myself as well in the colorway Leopard that's a more black, dark gray speckled yarn. Yeah. So. It is almost done. I can't wait to get this out there. Hopefully very soon. I do my own translation of the knitting patterns from... Sometimes I have my tech editor translate for me if I'm short on time. But uh, this time I did the whole thing myself. Uh, the translation myself. So I just have to go over that again to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. And yeah. But all the calculations and everything is done. I just need to make sure I did everything right um, in English. So finished object for today. Actually, my only finished object today. Um, yeah, that kind of took all my time. I've been knitting a little bit on my socks. Uh, I showed you last time but I did a little bit more progress so I am ready to do the heel flap and when I do the heel flap I can um, write down the exact pattern on how to uh, work the heel flap and then this sock pattern will be ready to go. I haven't figured out a name yet uh, for these socks. I was thinking about calling them Little V because of the uh, stitch pattern here on the on the leg it's like it looks like tiny teeny tiny uh, v's but if you have another idea for a name let me know it's always good to hear what you think if you have any good ideas uh the yarn is the pinta from I'm just going to make sure I say it right, because I have said this before. Pasquale, it's a pinta from a Pasquale uh, yarn, and it's a 100% national yarn, not national, natural, so it has no nylon in it. And this is so, a sock yarn is also a fingering weight yarn, but I'll talk about that a little bit later so I got some new stuff sometimes you can't I can't help it I um, see a bag I want or some yarn I want and sometimes I also kind of use yarn as a currency I don't know if you guys know that feeling but um, like one skein of really gorgeous hand dyed yarn in Danish kroners is like 200 so sometimes i will say oh, do i want these shoes it's the same as three or four skeins of yarn <laughs> and sometimes i'll go no i'd rather have yarn than shoes or 
you know that feeling is just how, how much yarn can i buy for that amount of money do i want the dress that bad or so um yeah so sometimes i just um i really don't know what i'm gonna knit with this uh yet but this is the uh, metal in touch merino single in the colorway uh, texas tulip I know, I'm not sure what I'm going to knit yet. I know there is a, a baby in my coming and I can't tell you who is pregnant. It's not me, but it's someone I know. And uh, if that turns out to be a girl, that could be a cute uh, baby bubble sweater in this colorway. But who knows? Um, then in the mail, when I talked about my project bags a few episodes ago, I don't know if it was last episode, I don't remember, but... I talked about project bags and how that is almost something that I collect or at least I really love my project bags and then I saw the grocery girls and Mrs. Brown's bag or um, Jody makes bags and she did um, this bag and the color she chose for the actually she knits up her sample and she takes a picture of her sample and she uh turns that picture into fabric and this colorway is uh from la bien -Aimé, the colorway um yellow brick road i don't know why that slipped my mind i have that colorway right here and the reason why i got this bag is I have a secret project in here, but I can show you that I am working uh, in Le Vienne May's uh, colorway, uh, Yellow Brick Road. So when I saw that uh, Jody did bags in this colorway, I just had to own this bag. And she even sent me a little pin with her logo. So I'm really excited about that. It came in the mail and it was, it didn't really take that long. I think maybe a month or so, so that's not too bad when you take into consideration the, mm, the situation of the world right now. I heard, heard stories about how some packages are just takes months to get, uh, get there, get to where it was supposed to be going. <laughs> so I'm just happy that it got here on time. So that is some new stuff, some yarn. And I bought this one as well. This is from... Uh, this one was a Madeline Tush. This is from a Danish um, dye company called It's Yarn. Uh, actually, these are the ones that I where I had my other sock club. But I just saw this um, on their website, and I was not even I was not there to buy yarn. I was there to buy some of this. I wanted to try out this soap for uh, washing my wool garments. Usually I would just put them in the washer on the on the program for uh, wool. But I have um, really for a long time been wanting to try uh, this brand and I couldn't resist. I had to buy two because I have one more up there on the shelf and that one smells like fig and this one like uh, is a pineapple scent. I didn't try the pineapple, but I did try the fig and it smells divine. And you know, here in Denmark, at least I know, I don't know if it's like this everywhere else, but if you buy for a certain amount, you'll get free shipping. So I just had to buy this one skein of yarn to get free shipping. And this one is called Dronningen's Bouquet, which means uh, like the queen's bouquet, like a bouquet of flowers. I just, uh, I couldn't resist this colorway. I just think it's so gorgeous. So this is, um, that's what I bought. Two skeins of yarn, some soap in a bag, uh, new purchases. And uh, now that I have these in my hand, I think I will talk a little bit about the yarn of the day, which is the fingering weight yarn. So fingering weight yarn is a yarn that'll um, usually, in Denmark, we will call it a sock yarn. In Denmark, we don't use the same words we don't have like a system so that we can categorize yarn into different weights we don't do that which is 
stupid or not stupid but it's just we should be better at talking about yarns according to weight i think that's a very good idea and very smart how to do that and uh these um these two yarns are fingering weight yarns and they are one ply that means it's only like I don't know if it shows, but you can tell that it's it's not spun with two uh, threads. It's only one. Um, unlike uh, this merino swirl from Fovelbo, you can tell here that this is two ply because it's two threads going like this so fingering weight yarn can be one ply two ply i don't know what i think this one from madeline tush no not madeline tush i think this one from la bien i think it's i think it's eight ply let me just check and a um the higher number ply, the stronger the yarn is because it will twist more and be stronger. So this is good for socks because it's a stronger. When I say eight ply, I'm so lying. It's only four ply. And I'm not even sure if you can even get a fingering weight yarn in eight ply. Uh, if there is a yarn expert uh, who knows, you can please uh, comment down below, but um, but the weight is the same. So you can have a fingering weight yarn in four ply, two ply, one ply, and probably more plies than I know. Today I'm just going to talk a little bit about the single ply because um, you can definitely I use this yarn for garments. Um, I would usually with a single ply, I would use an extra yarn to make it um, stronger, but also it has a tendency to kind of be twisting a little bit because it's only one ply. So if you knit in the round, there is a risk that the yarn or the garment will be twisting when you wear it. I have not had any experience with that myself and i have knitted one ply sweaters earlier and it hasn't happened for me but i know it has happened for other people so if you do want to knit a sweater with fingering weight yarn i think i would prefer to use a two ply yarn instead of a single ply yarn um, i like to use the single ply for shawls uh, my Elna shawl that I have showed before, the one I knit for my mom and named after my mom, is uh, this shawl, and it's, this one is all metal and touch. But actually, it's the same thing if you use whatever local yarn dyer you have. I'm sure most hand dyers have this single ply base. Usually, it's called single merino. Uh, or merino single. I know from its yarn it's called merino single. With Madeline Touch it's called um, merino light. Um, I don't think I have any other um, one ply fingering weight yarns here. I have some that's caked up that I'm using for the uh, Caitlin Hunter sweater um, that is from the Danish company Hand Dyed. I know Fru Velbo has some. I know uh, here in Denmark we have a few hand dyers that I know have single ply. Süsleriet has single ply. Um, and hand dye has single ply. And its yarn has single ply. And um, But almost any hand dye has a single ply uh, merino superwash yarn. Um, I have also used it in in sweaters if I knit with um, with a strand of mohair so if I use two strands it's fine to use the single uh, merino in my cactus flower sweater here I have used 
uh, it with the mohair as I said um, the same with the one I did for Esther it's also with one strand of mohair um, and I think I've done other shawls and sweaters um, using the one ply uh, merino um, yeah I I have um, also I use my leftovers from my single ply yarn for my corner to corner blanket that I might show in the end of this episode if I have time <laughs> um, but yeah so um, fingering weight uh, yarn is good for almost anything and um, it comes in all different kinds of uh, qualities and uh, plies uh, also the pinza that I'm knitting my socks in is a fingering weight yarn but it's a uh, I think this is a four ply you can twist the yarn and see yeah this is a four ply um, you can always use the fingering weight yarn uh, for socks especially if it has uh, silk or like in this case it has some silk or if it has like the merino swirl has a little bit of nylon uh, you need something um, to strengthen the yarn when you knit socks if you knit socks in a single merino that doesn't have any strengthening in it you will wear them out really fast um, but nylon or silk or nettle or I think uh, uh, Rami which is also in the, this yarn from this pinta yarn is something that will make your yarn stronger and if it's also like a four ply yarn that adds even more strength so that is actually the best yarn for socks I think you can still knit socks in this and love them but they won't last as long um, yeah I think that's all I have to say about the single ply merino yarn uh, if you have any questions about the yarn you can um, please let me know let me just show you that you can also get this um, one ply yarn with glitter can you tell that there's glitter in this uh, this is from metal and touch this is the peach i forgot the name peach something but uh, metal and touch has uh, like copper glitter and normal glitter yarn in there i think they only have the glitter in the merino light uh, base but i'm not sure you can check that out Okay, so that was a little uh, yarn talk about the fingering weight yarn. Let's uh, unbox now that we're talking about yarn because uh, that is also a fingering weight yarn. I'm going to open um, this one because this is the one that I originally got. This is in the base Visu from Birk and Bell. And because I ordered the Edna, they were so nice to also send me that um, afterwards. So I'm going to unbox the month of September. And this is the uh, Lord of the Rings Yarn Club from Birk and Bell. And it is, uh, um, this one is named after Eowyn. Uh, okay, so this is really gorgeous. I love the crazy speckles they picked out for this one. Look. So... Yeah, what color is this? This is all colors. I can see baby blue and purple and green and pink and some reds. Ah, this is really beautiful. Very beautiful. Okay, let's see how it uh, how this uh, looks on the another base. On the Edna base which has a little bit more nylon in it this is why I ordered this to begin with because it has a little bit more nylon so for socks I just like to have that extra strength yeah it looks very similar to the other one this has a little bit more neon green and turquoise I think on this one this one has the bright uh, purple speckle and this but they're equally gorgeous I'm a big fan of the colorways from Birk and Bell. So I have also ordered Birk and Bell's uh, Christmas 
or is it a Christmas? It's a Spice Girl club, but it's for December. So I'll be opening a Birgen Bell Spice Girl every Sunday in December. So I will link below to the Birgen Bell shop. So if you are, they don't have, Birgen Bell don't have a single uh, ply merino. But I have been thinking about maybe I should ask them if they want to maybe consider in a way to do that because that is uh, I really like the single merino. I don't know why I just really like that. Okay, unboxing is done. Now what do we need? I think we're done. Oh no, I have to show you something because I have been I'm working on a new pattern. And uh, I do a collaboration with Madeline Tush on this, so they have sent me the yarn. Thank you so much, Madeline Tush, for that. And uh, if you saw my vlog, I showed you the yarn. I'm going to show it again. So this, I have talked about Adelaide before because it is my favorite color from Madeline Tush. It's like a coral... Wouldn't you say this is like a coral colorway? And they sent me uh, the impression base to go with it, which is a uh, merino silk. So I'm working on a I'm working on a design in these babies. I have it somewhere. Yeah, I think I'd have it here in my bag from Cine, and I have only done this much. Um, so just a little bit, but it's, um, I'm really liking the, these two yarns together and the color is just gorgeous. I had to put this on hold a little bit because, um, yeah, first of all, I had to finish the Nina cardigan. And then second of all, I'm working on my bubble, this, um, in let me just show you how far I got. I am. Um, I have a huge problem, and that is that I, um, I'm using one one strand of Visu from Birken Bell in the colorway oats something. Where's my oats? I think, and one strand of Tilia and this light truffle, and um, either I used it all or I just can't find it. But this is what I have left, and uh, so I'm a little scared that I might not be able to finish this. And um, the my local yarn straw ran out of this colorway, so it's a problem. I might have to call Filkulena and ask them if they can help me out. So let me show you the progress I made so far on the Duffel West. Yeah, it looks a little funny, I guess. Uh, when you just show it like this, I'm gonna have a, like a deeper, um, what is the word, a deeper arm, a bigger uh, hole for sleeves. There's not gonna be any sleeve, but uh, this is gonna be a little deep. I think that's nice for when you wear a vest and you have maybe a shirt or something underneath. So the front is done. Uh, and I have to, you can tell here, I have the back and I have the needles on the back and I have to knit the, uh, yeah, I have to knit the back and then pick up stitches for the, for the ribbing on the, it's not sleeves, but on the sleeve, I'm going to sleeve it anyway, and uh, I have to pick up stitches here the neckline and work that so yeah i'm pretty happy about how this is turning out uh, it's hard to see actually how these two yarns uh, is it possible if i do like this can you tell can you see these two yarns how they work together this is the um, feeling my oats colorway and this is the light truffle and I just love how maybe some would say that ah, oh, you take such a beautiful hand dyed yarn and then you 
kind of drown it in this other colorway so it's impossible to see all these beautiful speckles and stuff but yeah uh, you can still see the speckles maybe not on the camera but when i look at the color here i can totally see that how the mohair and the merino kind of blend in together and still makes this two colored um how they kind of fade into each other and still make it's called something when you have two colors two different colors that you knit together what is that called i know that is there's a word an english word for when you have like a red and a white and you knit those two colors together but i can't remember the word but it does have that look and still you can see the speckles here and there so um, I still like this look better than if I had just used a solid color. I like, I like the, mm, it does something to the, to the, uh, finished fabric. Would you say that? That it has both the speckles and the two colorway blend. Yeah. So I'm. I'm really, um, I'm really pleased with the result on this bubble vest and I'm, I'm hoping that next time it will be done and I can show you. Um, and the last thing that I want to show you is that I asked um, Madeline Touch if they would send me some skeins of this yarn. It's called ASAP. Uh, it's a super bulky yarn. This is also a one ply, can you tell? You can see it's just one strand of yarn. Um, and I'm thinking about doing a hat pattern in this super bulky, it's called Holy Grunge. I think it's an awesome colorway. Um, I think that's it. I, um, I did, uh, a day in the life weekend, um, two weeks ago and I posted that and, um, it was so different to do a day in the life or just to do a vlog and take the camera and take you guys with me um i'm aware that there was maybe not enough knitting in that vlog or um maybe you would like to join me in my studio and a studio my office it's not a studio i would love to have a studio of my own but i could maybe um try to have or try to focus on filming a day in the life when I'm actually working, designing or working on a project. So I think I will add more knitting content into an, my vlogs in the future. Um, when I watch other people's vlog on YouTube, I, I like to see a mix. Uh, I'm a big fan of Sandy by the Lakeside and the way she does her um, vlogging. I like that it's both a little bit of her everyday life and also um, about her and her work as a she does um, project bags and um, and I just like to see yeah a little bit of everything actually um, I like to just have my coffee and sit in it and and be just relaxing for uh, 20 or 30 minutes or whatever so it's okay well, actually, I just enjoy that it's a little bit of both. Um, but I, I had some comments that people mm, would like more knitting content. And I guess that when you follow a day in the life of a knitwear designer, you would want to see more knitting and less everything else. So I will uh, actually have thought about maybe trying to do a whole like a sp special edition video or something of how i get an idea for a design how i draw it like the whole uh, process from idea to finished project um so i think i'll be doing that uh soon <laughs> uh, i think that's all i have for now actually um we're having an exciting weekend ahead of us we have some really good friends uh coming to see us tomorrow and um it's amazing because she's actually from 
Florida and uh, yeah so that she actually could come from the states over here is amazing and it's on the only reason that happened is because she got engaged to a very close friend of ours from Denmark so yeah we're really excited to be hosting uh, this couple this weekend it's gonna be a lot of fun and uh, Mm, yeah, next weekend on Thursday, I'm going to Fainu with uh, some of my knitting girls, uh, two of my best friends. And um, there was supposed to be a knitting festival in Fainu next weekend, but it has been cancelled due to the coronavirus. But since we have already paid for the summer house that we have rented, we are going to go anyway and pretend uh, everything is normal. So we're going to have three days. We're going to be there from Thursday to Sunday, and I'm going to be knitting for three days we don't cook we only eat out or buy stuff and um do like um, tapas or bread or cheese or whatever and we don't do anything except knit and um, relax and talk and have fun so yeah i'm totally excited about that so i'm thinking i will do a little bit of filming from over there and show you guys next time so you can see a little bit of the danish island Fenu and uh, yeah i think there'll be some knitting events over there anyway um, but let's see. Uh, the corona has taken a turn here in Denmark. It has been good all summer actually, but uh, now the numbers are not looking so good anymore. And um, people have to wear masks in public transportation. Um, that's uh, yeah, demanded by law now. But um, yeah, we're hoping it will go the right direction soon. And I hope wherever you are, that you take care and that you're safe and uh, good. And uh, I will see you in two weeks or so. Uh, take care.